And somehow we employed a man like that as a very secretive informant. Earhart Dabringhouse was employed in the U.S. Army Counterintelligence Corps and assigned to work with Nazi informants spying on the Russians. One of them was Klaus Barbie, the Butcher of Lyon, who had tortured and murdered thousands of Jews and resistance fighters. The Americans did not turn Barbie over to the French when they finished with him. They helped him escape to Bolivia. Other top Nazis were smuggled into the United States to cooperate in the war against the new enemy. So began the morality of the Cold War. Anything goes. The struggle required a mentality of permanent war, a perpetual state of emergency. And it meant a vast new apparatus of power that radically transformed our government. Its foundations were laid when President Truman signed into law the National Security Act of 1947. Now that National Security Act of 1947 changed dramatically the direction of this great nation. It established the framework for a national security state. Admiral Jean Larocque rose through the ranks from Ensign to become a strategic planner for the Pentagon and now headed the Center for Defense Information, a public interest group. The National Security Act of 47 gave us the National Security Council. Never have we had a National Security Council so concerned about the nation's security that we were always looking for threats and looking how to orchestrate our society. With the probability of 95% or better, there was indeed a shot fired from the grassy knoll. those threats. National security was invented almost in 1947 and now it has become the prime mover of everything we do is measured against something we invented in 1947. The National Security Act also gave us the Central Intelligence Agency. This is the house the Cold War built, the CIA, the core of the new secret government. Its chief legitimate duty was to gather foreign intelligence for America's new role as a world power. Soon it was taking on covert operations, abroad and at home. As its mission expanded, the CIA recruited adventuresome young men like Notre Dame's All-American, Ralph McGee. I look back to the individual that I was when I joined the agency. I was a dedicated cold warrior who felt the agencies out there fighting for liberty, justice, democracy, and religion around the world. And I believe wholeheartedly in this. Um, I, I just felt proud every day that I went to work because I was out at the vanguard of the battle against the international uh, evil empire, international communist evil empire. Iran, 1953. The CIA mounted its first major covert operation to overthrow a foreign government. The target was the Prime Minister of Iran, Mohammad Mossadegh. He held power legitimately through his country's parliamentary process, and he was popular. Washington had once looked to him as the man to prevent a communist takeover. But that was before Mossadegh decided that the Iranian state, not British companies, ought to own and control the oil within Iran's own borders. When he nationalized the British-run oil fields, Washington saw red. The Secretary of State, John Foster Dulles, and his brother Allen, director of the CIA, decided with Eisenhower's approval to overthrow Mossadegh and reinstate the Shah of Iran. The mobs paid by the CIA and the police and soldiers bribed by the CIA drove Mossadegh from office. Crown Prince Abdullah greets the Shah as he lands at Baghdad airport after a seven hour flight from Rome. The King of Kings was back in control and more pliable than Mossadegh. American oil companies took over almost half of Iran's production. U.S. arms merchants moved in with $18 billion of weapon sales over the next 20 years. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. Malicious lies that attempt to shift the blame away from the terrorists themselves, away from the guilty. New world order. An order win. New world order. An order win. New world order. An order win. New world order.
Um, I spent uh, Friday evening in St. Louis addressing about a thousand people at the Campaign for Liberty. Uh, and the uh, young man who runs the Campaign for Liberty, or one of the people uh, running it, and was with me is a guy named Steve Bierfeld, who's going to be on with us in a couple of minutes. And on Monday morning, I emailed him and I said, because I left at 6 o'clock Saturday morning, how did the rest of the weekend go? And he had an encounter with the TSA, the Transportation Safety Administration, in which they not only wanted to know who he was, who did he work for, how did he get the money that he had on him, and what did he plan on doing with that money. And unbeknownst to the TSA, he had one of these super duper new telephones on him where you just go like that, like you're scratching your chest, and the phone becomes a tape recorder. And about 85 to 90 percent of his encounter with these folks was recorded. We're going to listen to a little bit of it now. And then I think George Steve is going to join us. Okay, let's hear, let's hear the sound of Steve Bierfeldt and the TSA in a windowless room in the St. Louis airport. What do you do for a living? Is that relevant, sir? Yes, it is. Uh, am I legally required to tell you that? Well, I'll tell you what. Go kick the plate. Right. You may not be legally required to tell me that, but you will be legally required to help the police officer that wants to talk to you. Okay. I'm just trying to ask some questions to figure out what all this is about so I can get you on your plane. But you won't play smart and I'm not going to play your game. How much money is it? I don't know the exact amount, sir. I mean, the card says about forty-seven hundred dollars. Forty-seven hundred dollars, yes, sir. Why do you have all this money? I, I, I asked for say if I'm required by law to answer the question. That's my. Question. I'm just asking you why you have forty-seven dollars. I that's my question. I don't understand. Well, do you want, do you want to talk to EEA about it? They can. They'll probably ask. If they can tell me if I'm required to answer the law or question, I'll answer the question. That's, I'm just asking, looking for a simple, a simple question. question. I just want to know why you got forty-seven dollars. Yeah, it's not an unusual yeah. thing. I care if I need fifty bucks. He refuses to answer any dollars. questions. He don't. He don't want to answer. So we I mean, we all have to take him down to the yeah, station I mean, that's and let let DEA, FBI, and, and all oh, the people all talk to him. Every one of them. So I we mean, can do that. How old are you? What's your deal, sir? I'm um, twenty-five. Sir. Well, you answered that question, didn't you? That's on my driver's okay. license. Sir. So, I mean, I can count that money. I can find out how much it is. It's right in front of me. You know. I don't know why you have that much money. That's why I want to know. Yeah, he started this out there when I was trying to get everything cleared so he could make his flight. And I said, okay, we'll go in here. He started playing this game again. I said, I'm done with it. So. I'm not. I've been completely cooperative, sir. I'm not playing any games. You're not cooperative. You're going to ask the question. I'm simply asking you. Refusing to ask not refusing. If you have you nothing to hide, then you can just tell us what it's for. I mean, it's I, simply, it's just simple. They're gonna, you're going to have to have proof of, of why you have that much money anyway for, for the DEA. I understand, sir. If I'm required by law, I'll be happy to answer your questions. I don't understand the law. Are you from this planet? I mean, do you, you understand the question, what I'm asking you? Yes, okay, why can't you just answer the question? Am I required by law to answer? You know what? See, man, you, 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 act, you act like a child, man. Right? 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 I don't understand the law. You act like a child. Like well, this is confusing to me, so we're just going to take it to the station, and then maybe the DEA can find out. Where am I being taken to? You're going to the police station. The police station? Yeah. Okay. You can't answer any questions, but we don't know what's going on. Am I being forced to go to the police station? Come on, man, let's just go to the police station. Come am on. I being taken, or am I free to go? You were going, we're going to take you. You were going, going to the police station, yes. Am I free you, to go? If you, if you want to, whatever you want to call it, we're going to the police station. Am I, what's, it, what's it say in there? You know, no, we're not getting into semantics here. We're just going to go to the station. Oh, okay. You're not answering any questions. Right. questions. Right. You're suspicious okay. to me. And you're just from your answers. Mm -hmm. That's why we're going to the station. Am I being forced to the station? Or am I you forced? will be. You, you don't walk out of the station. Yes, you'll be going to the station. You'll be forced. Okay, that's fine. That's, yeah. I understand. You're, you're going to be going to the station. Now, do we have to put you in handcuffs or will we have a problem? No, sir. Would you I'm walk through this uh, no, sir, terminal? Detained. Yes. Okay. That's, that's fine, sir. I don't understand the law. I'm, I'm happy to go. Well, we're going to help you understand if you don't. Steve Bierfeld joins us on the phone. The, the voice that you heard of the uh, courageous and persistent young lover of liberty saying, tell me if I'm required by law to answer these questions, is Steve Bierfeld who joins us now. Steve, welcome to Freedom Watch. Steve on this? Steve, welcome to Freedom Watch. Good. Oh, good to hear you. Uh, Jerry Salenti is here and John uh, Stossel as well. So what do you think these cops were trying to get out of you when they couldn't tell you whether or not they had the lawful authority to compel you to answer questions about how you had this cash in your carry-on? Well, the first thing that was going through my head was I have a limited knowledge of the law, was not to say something that would incriminate myself. And in addition to the cash, I was carrying Campaign for Liberty literature, and I was carrying Ron Paul bumper stickers. 
So my immediate thought was, these guys already know about you know what I do and what I work. They're probably aware of the MIAC report, which you've covered. Maybe I shouldn't say something right away. What was your fear uh, about being in St. Louis, Missouri, of all places, being detained by police who would learn that you had Ron Paul bumper stickers, Campaign for Liberty bumper stickers, and in fact were employed by the campaign? Yeah, there was the report about a month ago where uh, law enforcement in Missouri sent out uh, a motive or uh, uh, you know, an email that said that Ron Paul supporters and Campaign for Liberty supporters may be potential militia members or terrorists. 